All right, Swami, you were just about to enjoy your hard-earned stale turkey sandwich during your shift. No <laughs> mayonnaise. No, of course not. And you get the call from EMS. You have a 32-year-old female who delivered one hour ago at home, and she's coming in with some very heavy vaginal bleeding. What do you want to do first? All right, so Jamie, you know, I just started here. I'm not really comfortable this year. You have to walk me through this. So I think uh, I'm going to figure out where the bleeding is. Uh, you guys are okay in the splash zone, right? You don't mind? Like okay, cool. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm going to look for the, where the bleeding is coming from? Absolutely. Okay. So first thing, you're going to examine the perineum okay. and look for a sign of laceration. Oh, whoa. Okay. I don't see a laceration, but uh, there's quite a lot of blood coming out of the vagina right now. Okay. So no bleeding in the perineum. So next, I want you to examine the vagina. Okay. So most commonly, if you're going to have a laceration from the delivery in the vagina, it's going to be in the posterior segment. So go ahead and get a good look there. Okay. You'll have to sweep your hand around because you're going to be dealing in a field of a lot of blood. So I don't feel any laceration. Okay. Next, still a lot of blood coming, though. Okay. Next, you're going to check the cervix for laceration. If it was a precipitous delivery or if she pushed past an incompletely dilated cervix, that's where the problem's going to be. I'm not feeling anything there either, but I think the blood's coming out of the cervix. Okay. So we're talking about uterine anatomy. So that's responsible for about 80% of the bleeding in postpartum hemorrhage. So now you've determined the source. What are you going to do next? Just start with some good fundal massage. All right. So I'm doing some, I'm, I'm massaging. It feels really boggy, Jamie. Okay. All right, so if, if you're not getting good compression with that, so I want you to reach your other hand inside, okay. and you want to go all the way in. You want to insert your hand all the way into the uterus, and I want you to feel for retained products of conception and start clearing away the clots. Okay. So kind of scoop and right. pull out. All right. And once you get out all the available clots that you can get, I want you to put your hand all the way in there, and you're going to do bimanual compression. So all how right. do you do that, Swami? So my hand is inside, and then I'm making a fist, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to push against the uterus with my fist, and then I'm going to push down with my outside hand. Absolutely. Okay. So you're getting this. All right. Now, I, no, Jamie, there's still a lot of bleeding going on. Can I give some medications? I think you should. Okay. So uh, let's see. There's bleeding. TXA stops all bleeding. Of course. So I'm going to give a gram of TXA. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, I remember this. Let's see. OB. Let me flash back. 15 years ago, <laughs> oxytocin, yes. uh, I got Cytotec, uh -huh. Hemabate, uh -huh. Methogen. Nailed it. Four oh. out of four, guys. Oh, four yes. out of four. oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm just gonna, sorry. Don't get too excited. We've got a patient here. I'm, I'm compressing. So, so while you're calling for your hemorrhage-specific medications, we're going to activate the massive transfusion protocol. Okay. Now, Swami, you have done everything right on this patient so far, but she is still bleeding. So before this row here becomes the splash zone officially at this Gallagher yeah. concert, you need to stop this bleeding. What are you going to do next? All right, so I feel like, okay, so when I have a bad GI bleed and I got nothing left, we put a balloon in and tamponade. So Absolutely. can I take my glove, blow it up like a balloon, and with, stick it up with there? With a turkey thing and a yeah, smiley like a face on it? Can you do that? No. So, but I need a balloon. I need something to put in there that can compress. Absolutely. All right, so what, what do we got? We have a Bakri balloon here for okay, you. Okay, Bakri balloon. All, All right. All right, so... Let's get this for you. Here it's you go. a generous amount of lubrication. <laughs> okay, so I'm putting that in, and then, and then, am I, do I, does my hand need to be in here to hold this in? It is because this is not a vaginal packing. You'll just be masking the source of the bleeding. So you need to ensure that this, the, it is in the uterus in its entirety, past the cervix. So your whole okay. hand is going to be in there, and your hand is going to stay in there, keeping it in place while we're blowing it up. So this is going to become a two-person procedure. Okay. So and we're talking about what, like 20 cc balloon here? How big do you, th do you think a uterus is bigger than 20 cc's? I hope so. It certainly is. I've seen is the size funny. of my children. Yeah. It's got to be bigger than 20 cc. It is. So you're talking about blowing this balloon up to 500 cc. 500 cc. So All right. That's your max. So we got half a liter that's going to go in here. Yep. And so how you're going to do this is you're, while you have this, you're going to have your partner grabbing this. And Swami, your other hand is actually going to be on the patient's belly here. Okay. You're going to feel the uterus getting a little bit bigger until it's tamponaded. And then you're going to mark the fundal height with a Sharpie because that's where it is filled. Okay. And the reason you're going to do that is if she continues to bleed and it's masked by the balloon and kept inside, the fundus is going to continue to grow and you know that you will not have stopped the problem and she's going to probably need emergency surgery. Okay. You can also